Hello and welcome to Too Fast, Too Forever. There's all kinds of family. We chose this one. This is episode 52, Pit Stop Diagnostics. Brian O'Connor. I'm Joey Lewandowski. I'm Joe Two. And this episode is brought to you by the Academy, the South Bay Regional Public Safety Training Program. This full-time, 888-hour intensive course satisfies the California Commission on Peace Officer Standards and Training post. Minimum training requirements for California entry-level police officers. (laughs) If you want to learn how to be a not shitty California police officer, and because this is Carriage Driving School Lap, and we're all about learning this lap, go to theacademy.ca.gov. Very cool. Well, this episode will not be, what did you say, 888 hours? Is that how long? How many? Yeah, 888 hour intensive course, uh, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 for six months. Whew, that is... Uh, that's rough, right? That's a lot of time. Yeah, but I mean, I guess, you know, if you're going to be a All cop... you have to do is, like, learn how to shoot people and... It should take like 20 minutes. Wow. We'll be good. Go undercover. You know, the difference between the Gallo 12 and the Gallo 24. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can wrap this up in like, I think we could run a police training academy in like three hours. I think we're most you know? of the way there. I think that everybody's seen these movies is most of the way there. So, I mean, you just probably need like, what, like maybe another week or two? Maybe like an 80-hour course. Like I said, man, we just got to do the Tim the Tim Taylor method and, and just do the complete opposite of what Brian does the, every time. So. Tim the Toolman Taylor? Yeah, Tim the Toolman Taylor, yep. All right. Well, this is a pit stop. We are going to do a deep dive through the Fast and Furious Wikia for Brian O'Connor. Karen, not here tonight. This is So this is, if you are, I, I don't know, I, I'm assuming everybody who listens, or most people who listen, know what we're doing, but this is the... If not... This is the driving school lap. So yes. every other week when we do the main movies, the, the nine in the franchise, Kara will be joining us for her first trip through those movies. She's never seen them before. Correct. Not just like her first trip through them, just like her first trip total because she's never watched any of them. And we did the first movie last week. Went very well, thankfully. So now we great, are yeah. here as we wait for Kara to come back with us and record Too Fast, Too Furious. In the off weeks, we're going to do pit stops. So they are tangentially or somewhat or completely related to these movies. We are focusing on Brian O'Connor, and Paul Walker this lap. So yeah. this episode, we're going to go to the Wikia page for Brian O'Connor. I sort of skimmed it before. There's a lot on there that we're not going to read, but I'm going to go through here, see if we can learn some stuff, you know, see if we can refute some stuff, get a sense of who Brian is, you know, more than we already knew. Down. I'm super down. We'll get to that in a little bit, but before we get there, let us first do extracurricular activities. Since we last recorded, Joe, what have you been up to? Hockey season started. I talked about that I was, you know, getting ready for hockey season. So it started, and I I have a a revelation for you. First game I watched, I was drinking, watched the Penguins, they lost. Second game I watched, I was like, not feeling it, drinking some water. We won like 7-2. Last night I watched... Was drinking, Penguins lost. I think this is going to be a sober season, brother. If that's not the absolute definition of, I don't know, fan? Fan? Like superstition, Superstition, man. yeah. I, I don't know what is. My superstition supersedes my alcoholism. I think as of right now, it's a sober season until something changes. Wow. So now what's going to happen if you don't drink and they lose? Are you going to start drinking again? I'm going to I'm gonna play it out. Like, as of right now, this is going to, like, unless something, they go on, like, a tear, and I'm sober for, like, five games, and they lose all five in a row. Sober season so far. Wow. Okay. Very healthy. Yeah. Lots of water. I'm just going to be guzzling water. Water. The only other thing that I did is I just got a new San Francisco sourdough starter. I'm starting that so I can make some San Francisco sourdough because the one that I've been using to make bread is an Italian sourdough. The Jimmy so Garoppolo it's not actually like of really, sourdoughs. It is the Jimmy Garoppolo of sourdoughs. That's very appropriate. It's not actually sour. You know what I mean? Like it's it's just like yeast, live yeast. They they use the word sourdough to be all encompassing. It doesn't actually have to be sour, so this one's going to be more soured. Gotcha. So I'm excited okay. to see how that goes. But that's what I've been up to the past week. Very cool. You? So since I last, re- since we last recorded, I went away this weekend. I went up back up to that uh, cabin in the woods that we went up to for the uh, near bachelor party back in April. Yes. And yep. uh, one of our friends was turning 40, and so we went up there, Damn. and uh, there were seven of us up there that's for cool. two nights. It was very nice. It was relaxing. Uh, played some poker, ate so much barbecued meat. Oh my god, I ate so much awesome. meat. It was the greatest. I 
just didn't stop eating meat for two days. That's great. Drank a bunch of beers, read a lot. Like there was just a hammock there and it was like a beautiful weekend. So I just like went out there and just read. Uh, it oh, was just, cool. it was very like nice, relaxing weekend. You know, we we listened to the two Yankee games on the radio because uh, the Wi-Fi was too bad to stream audio and the TV signal was out. Uh, so we, we had enough That's awesome. internet to stream radio. So we did that. So that was nice. The Yankees won both those games. The Yankees yeah. have since swept the Twins onto the ALCS, which will be... Awesome. At least two games underway by the time this episode comes out, if not three. Yeah, it's uh, it was a nice weekend. Um, That's good, dude. I wonder, you know, we said a lot, and I think this is going to be true of a lot of the segments on the show. As we record now every week, I think a lot of the segments are going to be shorter, and I don't know that I'm going to have a lot to talk about, but, you know, a couple times, and then I'm, there might be a Halloween party this weekend, I'm not sure, but... Uh, That's a little early for Halloween, isn't it? It is. So this this friend of mine, who I'm not super close with, but a friend of mine invited me to one, but he's sort of doing a me, and he's like, well, I've heard from a lot of people that people can't come to this date, so I'm going to give two different dates. So there's this weekend, and there's like the, oh. the weekend before Halloween. And so okay. he's like, come two to one, come pass. to both, whatever you want to do. So instead of doing my two day of our weekend, he's like, we're having basically the same party twice, you know, come to one, come to both, whatever. Yeah. Cool. So that works. Yeah, I get it. We will see if I go to that. I'm, I'm sort of waiting because there's another friend. When I told the story about going to that housewarming party that became a surprise wedding and yes. the mutual friends that I met those people through, the same yes. mutual friends are going to go to this party or go to later in the month. So I'm just sort of figuring out uh, you know, okay. when they're going to yeah, go. Yeah, you want to time it with m- the most of your friends yes. going. So yep. Yep. I get yep. it. Yep, yep, yep. But that, that was just about that, I think. We both saw Joker. I think we've talked a lot about Joker. I did not like Joker. You did like Joker. Like I was telling you yesterday, I didn't think it was like pivotal film. You sent me a really cool article. If anybody wants it, I'm sure we can send it to them too. Yeah, my but fa- it was, uh, just real quick, you know, my favorite film critic on, uh, my favorite film critic is David Ehrlich on IndieWire. He does the year-end videos that I love, but he also mm-hmm. just wrote two really good things. He wrote a really well-written review that he liked the movie more than I did, but he didn't love the movie when he saw it back in Venice in August, and then he also wrote a thing about uh, how Fight Club is basically the movie that Joker wanted to be but didn't become. Absolutely, and I agree with him, and we talked through this, that I liked it. You know, I don't think it's, like, important, pivotal film. I don't think that it'll hold up either. So uh, I think he encompassed a lot of my thoughts into his article about the Fight Club, like, where I was at with it, which is that I like it. It was a fun time to spend two hours watching this movie. It wanted to be something more... For me, I wasn't expecting that, so I wasn't disappointed by it. Yeah. I am, uh, on, a, on another sort of movie unrelated to our podcast point of view, I'm excited because yeah. tomorrow night my uh, I'm going to see Gemini Man, that new Will Smith movie that's apparently yeah, yeah, not yeah, yeah. good. Is it really? It, I thought I heard things that it was, re- it was like it's, really supposed to be It's got like a 30 good. on Metacritic. Like, it's bad. Ugh. Yuck. There's, I, I have okay. a sneaking suspicion that it might be the kind of movie that I love. I don't know. Um, but what I'm interested about is that my movie theater's IMAX screen reopened. They were closed, like, for six months or whatever. Yeah, you said this for, like, a forever. And they opened yeah. it with something called, like, lasers at IMAX. Like, it's, like, this new projection system. And I think there's new sound there. And they put in new seats. And so, like, I'm basically going to check out it's the like theater. It's, like, the demo. <laughs> the demo version. I guess. I have, like, no idea, we... man. But it's, uh, they, 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 I think they had it open last week for Joker, too. But they're, they have it open okay. this week, especially for, for this new high frame rate lasers. 3D projection of Gemini, man. So... I don't know if the movie's going to cool. be good, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sort of scout out uh, the, the theater itself, because it yeah, could be good. why not, man? It could be good. And if not, like, you've got a new, fresh theater, exactly. which is cool. always And cool, I'm not paying so. for the ticket. I just pay for the monthly thing for AMC, so yeah. it's not like it costs me any money. Just, you know, I drive down Do you there. not pay an upgrade fee for the IMAX? No. So that was the thing. So MoviePass, when MoviePass oh. was around, didn't cover IMAX, 3D, Dolby, whatever. Yes. You could, like, what I would wind up doing, which was against the rules, and sorry, MoviePass, but now they're gone, I would check into a regular movie and then basically pay the, or like, $11 or whatever, the credit that would go toward that, and then I would pay out of pocket 3 or $5 or whatever. But AMC ah, okay. covers everything. Like, they just, it's not all showings, like, when they have special events and stuff, like, you know, like yeah, the Fathom yeah, yeah. events that or whatever, they don't cover, but all IMAX, all Dolby, all 3D, everything. It's That's all weird. encompassed in there, so, yeah. Because I have the Cinemark one, and it's like, you pay an extra for XD or IMAX. Well, how much do you pay a month? Like nine bucks, and you get, like, one ticket. Yeah, so that's, uh, if there was, a, I, I can imagine there's an equivalent of that. It'll be like that, but this is just, you know, 25 for three a week, so I guess they're still banking yeah, on people not different. going. Yeah, 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 but... Yeah, so I'm excited. Yeah, this is like, you just get one ticket. The main reason why I have the Cinemark one is just because it gets rid of the online fees. 
So if mm. I buy a ticket online now, I don't pay the the like three dollar service charge, and it's the you know the theater near me that we like to go to. So I'm like, look, I bank the tickets. If I use them or not, it doesn't really matter. But I mainly hate paying the like four dollar yeah ticket service fee, and you have to like reserve your seats at this theater. So it's not like I would be like, oh well, I can just go to the theater and buy them when I get there and p- sit wherever I want. Like it's much better for me to buy them you know a week or a month in advance and have them. So that was another thing that I didn't really I wasn't crazy about with Movie Pass because you would have to be in person to buy the ticket and you would go there and when it was just like a general thing it was fine but like when it was assigned seating as theater sort of transitioned to that Kinda it was sucks. more difficult yeah. and especially like when I was in Austin the draft house is all assigned seating and I would go there and have terrible seating or be sold out or whatever but now with AMC you can just do it online which is nice uh, there's yep. a there's a little bit of restriction there but it's you know it's it's not bad and I agree the convenience is it's just even if you so even if you're not it. yeah even if you're not like making quote unquote making money on the tickets like it's just uh what you're not having to deal with is almost worth yep, it. Yep, agreed. Patreon so okay so here's here's big news. Okay. Since we last did an episode I put up the poll on Patreon. So if you are a okay. patron of Too Fast Too Forever if you support us financially over there uh you mm-hmm. had you can vote in the official poll to decide our final film final brian walker movie or, oh god brian walker brian walker final paul walker movie that we're going to watch this lap as of right now we've got four votes in i accidentally didn't keep people from voting <laughs> twice so i think jake <laughs> voted twice i don't know if it was on purpose or not but here's the four movies in the running we've got into the blue we've got joyride yes. running scared and varsity blues so those are the four that you can vote on if you are a patron over at TooFastTooForever.com. Even if you just kick in a dollar a month, you can vote on this. Yep. You can have your choice for what we're going to talk about. Uh, we put the same poll up on Twitter. You know, I, you had the idea. I like the idea. We put it on Twitter. Yeah, I just, I, we just wanted to see what the Twitter audience says. It, does, it doesn't play into it. You're not, like, losing out or anything. But I was curious to see if the general population and the Patreons answered the same movie. Now, I don't, I, I don't want to share what the Patreon people have picked yet, just because I want to okay. keep it as a little bit of a secret. But let me take a look at the Twitter poll and see what that is like right now. There's 16 hours left on the poll, so it's going to end the Thursday before uh, you hear this, but they have nine votes so far. Five people have selected Into the Blue, four for Varsity wow. Blues, one for Running Scared, and one for Joyride. So Into the Blue, overwhelming favorite there, but uh, everything's Damn. got a little okay. bit of play, so, you know. Yeah. One of those we'll, we'll be doing for sure. It's going to be, I think, the final episode this lap, so I think it's after Hobbs and yeah. Shaw before the tune-up, maybe? It's going to be this. So we that got some time. Sense. But if you want to support us on patreon.com slash too fast too forever, you can get free merch, free gear, free swag. Alex Ellen and your your letter and your stickers are in the mail. So thank you for supporting us over there. Also, shout out to Cassie Wilson, Jake Freer, Ben Milliman, Nick Burris for supporting us over there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, guys. But yes, yeah, swag and merchandise, early access to episodes, bonus episodes, access to the Fast and Furious Minute document, which we'll be doing another minute tonight. Uh, your choice of pit stop movies and themes, voting for all pit stop fan selected movies, and our undying love and affection. So, if you want your vote, like this is really, I think, aside from just getting stickers and stuff, I feel like this is the first time that, aside from Ben, you know, picking a movie, this is the first time that having a being a patron over there is like, oh, I actually get to do something. You know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah, yeah, it's you a cool little thing. You, yeah, you get to pick. Yeah. On iTunes, we have no new reviews, 15 ratings, all five stars, all wonderful reviews. Thank you for that. If you are listening and have not reviewed us yet, go do that. But Joe, let us open the mailbag. We have, I didn't think we got one, but we have one email tonight. This is oh, from nice. Nick Burris. Hi, Nick. Subject line, never getting caught up, LOL. <laughs> well, that's just because we sped up the pace, so, yeah. You know, there's okay. nothing but time, Nick. you got nothing but time to catch up. Yeah, and, and we're going to have, like we said, we're going to have shorter ones coming up and stuff that's out. Of, yeah. I you think, fine. We, we, we think that this is going to be a shorter episode, but who knows? I mean, you're looking, as you're listening now, you're looking at the timestamp. Maybe it's 80, 888 hours. I don't know. <laughs> What we're imagining this episode is going to be, I think the pit stops are generally going to be a little bit shorter, but it's going to be, it's going to give us the opportunity Definitely not two and a half to hours, dabble in sure. uh, weird associated stuff that we otherwise wouldn't. Yep, true. First off, not my tattoo, which it was. We were all discussing tats, and I seen that one on Facebook and thought to share it. Oh, remember his, ah, like, that whole yes. sleeve? I mean, that would have been, I mean, whoever has that, whoever's arm that is great tattoo it was pretty cool yeah second it's been a while since i've been to the movie theater seems like you experienced some messed up theaters lol that's the fucking in the theater mm-hmm. when you saw the kids having sex next to you in the yep. theater so, yeah. yeah 
He says, I've seen a double yeah. show once in the army and seen the Expendables 2. Then I said, screw it, went right around and seen Resident Evil. Don't remember which one it was. That's a Joey move Resident right there. Move. I don't think I've ever done that. That's my whole, that's another, you know, not, not we are not sponsored by AMC A-List. We are sponsored by the Academy. But what I like about A-List is that unlike Movie Pass, where you only see one a day, I can go and see two or three in a night. And I'd like to, like, if I can, I like to overlap it perfectly so I can basically walk out of one theater, go to the bathroom, Into sit down another. the other one, like with one or two trailers left, and then just, you know, yep. skip basically 20 minutes of nonsense. That's it's, awesome. Uh, you yeah. know, you cut down on the traffic time, the, the car, the, tr- the commute time. It's environmentally friendly. It's it's irresponsible not to watch four hours of movies in a row. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the Street Rod of My Family's is in 1939. Ooh, you were saying, I think, newer. I was trying to go older. I said 50s, I think 40s, 50s, and I think you were saying 60s? Maybe. I don't remember. But 1939 yeah. Ford Standard 350 four-speed. Just fun car. Mm. I mean, yeah, it looked beautiful fun. looking. Yeah. I think we should have justice for Brazil, Berlin, etc. Because because all of them kill people there. They they do. We've we've talked about the Avengers theory. They, like who's worse? And we should have justice. We should we should make. Oh, never mind. That was a terrible <laughs> thought. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> We should have justice for those cities. And yes. this is a hot take from Nick, possibly. He says, technically, Shaw didn't kill Han. The explosion did. Or the gas, it's whatever. Still love all those people. He Well, he purposely hit him with a yeah. car. He hit his car with a car. That's like so maybe- yeah, that's like saying that, well, I don't I was, that was going to be a bad met. I was going to say, like, if you shoot someone, then they go to the hospital and they die of pneumonia. Or, you know what I mean? It's like, well, I didn't kill him. Well, so, well you did. And Sepsis. you put him there. Yeah, exactly. Or, like, the bullet killed him. I didn't kill him. And you're like, well... Yeah. And it was a McLaren on the photo I showed, I shared a long time ago. Uh, remember that, that okay. new, uh, Pennsylvania plate with the the beautiful car in New Jersey, McLaren. So yes, yes, very yes. Cool. Very Nick cool. says I did listen to Lifespan, and Joe, you sound like the witch's guards from The Wizard of Oz. LOL. <laughs> nice try. Had Good. to rewind a couple of times. And nine foot cock. Very steamy little <laughs> nympho going on. Anyway, I'll email again when I complete the latest episode. Catch you on the other side, Nick. Well, I'm glad people are listening to You Are My Life's Bed, because it's, it's just like, it's pure fun for me. Hopefully it's fun for you reading the narrator parts. I love it, man. The story is so wild. And like, now it's like in my brain enough to where like, like we were talking with Kara on the last episode, like maybe Johnny Tran's not dead. Like I'm trying to look for ways to make You Are My Life's Bed real yeah. in this universe now. It just makes it more, I mean, because we're going to oh, watch these movies forever. Wait. What? What if no niece Denise is Ellie Toretto? Denise, Ellie... No, because cause they wouldn't have, like... Dom would have probably swung. You know what I mean? Mm. His reaction would have been bad. Was he, is he's he like listening in the room. when they talk about Because I don't remember. I think they're maybe all around the table. Dom would have been real pissed if, like, no niece... Like, I, and also, like, they treat Mia with a lot of respect, so I don't think they would let anybody talk shit on... Well, what if we don't know that Ellie she's a Toretto? Either. Like, what if she was... Like, it's like one of those, like, oh, yeah, my friend Denise, Adopted. oh, yeah, my sister Ellie, they're both going to be here. It's like the same girl. Oh, like, what was that movie that we watched? Hey, like, I have this new boyfriend. And it was, um, and Emma Stone was in it. It was a Ryan Gosling movie, right? Like, you're going to meet my dad. And, like, he knows. Was it Gangster Squad? It was, no, it was the one where he's, like, crazy. Oh, Crazy Stupid it's Love. Like, yes, yes. That's what I'm thinking. Where he of. is the, the boyfriend and the friend, or whatever. The boyfriend and the pickup he's the artist. The boyfriend, yes, exactly. Yes. And his dad's like, what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Ellie Toretto could be Noni's Denise, and we didn't no Mm -hmm. and it's a crossover yeah maybe but she would have to be super old because she went to school with paul she couldn't be well we'll 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 take it back to the workshop but there's 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 a seed of an idea there you know again it's it's not likely but you know possible it's possibility all right we'll shop it i'm I'm, so i'm going to hold off right now for on the streets and rock the vote because there's not been a lot of news we'll we'll do a recap of that next episode okay especially rock the vote like we know that rock the vote it's not happening but uh I'm still going to keep looking every main episode. Hopefully. The yeah. Rock does his thing. But, Joe, let's talk about the Fast and Furious Minute. A minute I called Goddamn oh. Street Racers. Find another way home. Goddamn Street Racers.
is yours. Whether you win or lose. So this once again, you were your uh, your prediction from a couple episodes ago once again rang true that we are again sort of pushing out the race. We are not at the race yet. I still you know so we still got time, nothing but time, but we still got time before the race begins. This is another set of minute. They're just getting to the line in this uh, yeah. sort of not filler minute, but filler minute. When I think of them preparing for this first race, I think of a ton of cars, and there is a lot of cars, but in specifically this minute, it was a lot of shots of just people's faces and reactions, right? Like, yeah. it was a lot more people with no dialogue, but, like, a lot of people. Like, you see, like, Vince, you see Mia, you see Letty. You see Jesse. Brian's face. You see them all lined up, and then you see the cars. But, like, it's not really heavily focused on the cars in this No, movie. it's basically letting you know who's at the scene, who is there, who's watching. What we do yeah. get, which I think is really nice, is that there's sort of the... I know for sure that they do in, the, uh, in, the, in Brazil, in the cop cars, we get the first time of at least a few times in the series where they have the four racers in a row and you see all their faces in the frame. Yeah, so that's I, I think that the shot. first time we've had really... it here, so I thought that was kind of cool. At least the first Monica, where she comes up and tells or maybe not even the first Monica. Maybe it's the second or third Monica, because we've had different Monica possibly before, right? So Maybe, yeah. I don't know, but we definitely get the Monica, we get, you know, the sight of Wells's confusion of, you know, you can have this one and you can have that one too. I still love the idea that <laughs> that Wells thought that she was talking about, like, each tit. Like, you could have the left one, but if you win you get the right one. I have always considered the body to be like one piece yeah. and never really like split it down sectionally like if you're like you can have my right hand but not my left you know it's like it's such a weird concept for me so just like introducing this concept to my brain that like you can piece out your body in segments is like very strange so i think it'd be really funny if like and i don't even know how it would work to you i mean i'm sure i know that like tradi- and this is again overthinking but what is the minute for but you know like how at least in movies i'm sure in real life i just don't have an experience when a guy is with like a prostitute she's like no kissing like especially like pretty woman and stuff like you know no kissing on the lips i don't do that like i wonder if there is like that kind of segmentation like you can do whatever you want with me but you cannot touch my left breast because you did not win that race (laughs) maybe man maybe i don't know i don't know and the other Uh, the other big uh sort of noteworthy thing in here is that when they were lining up brian overshoots the line as we all know but he overshoots it almost by an entire car length it's like dude come on yeah so they're they're showing us that he's a shitty driver that or he's just not a well-versed driver yes I had some cool things in this one. One thing that you made mention of, I'm just going to go, you know, just like the highlights like I like to do. When you see the shot of all the guys standing there, like in between the car segments, there's one guy holding a like this cutout sign. And I paused it and like I, you know, I adjusted my head to like get like a good. Uh, I tried to, I couldn't angle. read it. So you, uh, you did a better job than I did. Okay. And I think it says irresistible. I think he's just holding up one sign that says irresistible, which makes me wonder why. <laughs> it kind of looks like, and I don't know that it is, but it kind of looks like it would be, we're a gang, this is our gang sign, he's holding it up. It kind of has like the, it's like the old like kind of word art sort of thin in the middle and sort of spread on either side, right? Like it's like the, it cuts in like sort of like a... Yeah, and it's cut out. Yeah. And it looks like you would like, maybe maybe he would spray paint over it and use it as like a, a stencil. Yeah. But it just says irresistible. So like, is his gang name irresistible? Is he irresistible? I think this is more of like a personal sign that he's holding this up like I'm irresistible, like Superfly or something. You know what I mean? Like, well, maybe you know. Th- I'm, I'm sure that this is a place to meet people, meet, make new friends, make new, you know, lovers, meet ladies, yeah, yeah well, you know, sure. hookups, whatever, everything that you want, everything you need, it's all there for you at the at. at so he's not irresistible. Race wars is the race, yeah, yeah. Bunch of like-minded individuals. Maybe, maybe he's like a drug dealer, and he's the connect, and he's like, go if you want to find the plug, hold up and like find the guy with the irresistible sign. It's him. Yeah. You know what I mean? We, we have no idea, but he's holding a sign that says irresistible, which I found very interesting. Yeah. We get a new piece of technology in this minute. Okay. A radio shack under the moniker Realistic Patrolman Scanning Receiver Pro 48 UHF UVF Air. All right. And that's the police scanner that Leon has in his car. Is there, did you get a sense of what the the speaker, the stereo that Don listens in his car when he puts on Lock It Down by the Digital Assassins? I absolutely did. Did you see that? Or did you, or were you asking? I'm just, I'm setting you up. alley It was an Alpine, they were, they were Alpine S10 subwoofers. Mm-hmm. They make new versions now that don't look the same. But in the, in the document, I have a, a link to the silver and blue ones that he has. And I found he has an Alpine V12 432 channel power amplifier model number MRV 
dash F303. That's what I could see. He has, a, he has like a six dish changer in the back too. Some kind of like Alpine screen. What were those things? We were just talking about them. The like the win amp that you would push this thing and it would just like show you the like. Oh, like a visualizer? Like a visualizer. Yeah. He has like something like a screen that's just a visualizer in the back too. But like I couldn't pick up anything off that to figure out what like what specifically it was. Yeah, there's a six dish changer that's blurry. But those are the two pieces, the main pieces of the sound system in his trunk that i got and again we get dom listening to techno in his car yeah which is like very weird right like he doesn't seem like a techno guy like he just doesn't look like a techno guy so it's it's strange yeah, i wonder if um i wonder how much of that is like what he wants to listen to and what just kind of the mood that he wants to set you know what i mean like he's like this is maybe this fits high the, energy it, yeah yeah and i think it's of the scene it's of the culture for sure don't you think like Dom, Dom seems like a like a more of a metal kind of guy to me, right? I don't know. I would think not. Maybe not metal. Maybe like sort of gasolina, kind of that Latin. Oh, but he's Italian in the movies, right? So I see. That's why I think that like if he was Italian, that wouldn't be so much like the Spanish music. It would be more like metal. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I just think that you know he we sp- he spent the time in Cuba. He spent the time in the Dominican. Like I think even though he is but he Italian, hasn't done that yet, right? No, but I, I mean we haven't seen him do it yet. But I'm sure that he has. Just because, I mean, I don't think you spend that much time, like, in the Dominican and then, like, back in Cuba and wherever, like, feels like that's kind of, like, a lifestyle choice. Like, I know that he is embodying this Italian-American man, but it feels like more like he's he's tapped in more into the, the Hispanic roots than Italian roots. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, at this point in his life, it's it seems to me like he hasn't left California yet, you know? Possibly. I don't know. Because he hasn't been, like, on the run yet. And if he was, it was probably, like, in California. Like, he's not, like, a, like a federally wanted man at any point until now at the end of this movie so so you think he hasn't crossed state lines he's just wanted within california yeah he's he's been he's definitely been to jail and wanted in california for like the beating and whatever whatever like with the wrench but i don't think that he has been to like i don't think he has the latin music influence yet because he hasn't tried to run away to the dominican for months at a time to escape prosecution gotcha okay right. that was my logic that's yeah. fair but yeah uh anything else in this minute that you pointed out that you think is worth noting yes i do have one last interesting tidbit we saw that and we talked about on the last minute that they're in front of uas uh wheels and tires mm-hmm. which we called talk to the guy the way the film is shot it looks like there's uas on one side and there's this building on the other side that says like western museum i was thinking i, I don't know i can't figure out what it was but if you go to the streets now in Google Street View and you like, you know, click the link from the last minute and you turn around, there's no building on the other side. Hmm. And I don't know if that was camera magic or that building's been since torn down because, you know, we're now 20 years away from the movie. Right. So I don't know which one it is, if it's which how it played out. But the building that's on the other side of them. So like when you see them all lined up and you see Brian and there's a building behind them, there's no more building there unless they've you know unless they were using two different scenes gotcha if they were shooting from one direction on one street and one direction on the other street right which would kind of not make sense if like this movie didn't have a budget like that yet and i don't know how realistic that is as a like a movie person like we don't have you know somebody on here that's worked on movies right now to ask them like is that a common thing like i guess you would want a building there to see to give it like some kind of backdrop but at the same time it's like would you really shoot it on two different streets, the same scene? Yeah, I think you could. I don't know if you would, but I don't know. Yeah. So Not with a small budget. So it's just a curiosity that I had and, and another little tidbit that I figured out this time. Yeah. Well, we will be back with the next minute. I think that in the next minute, Danny Yamoto, the fourth driver, the sort of the unknown, unnamed driver of sorts, will be driving or will be playing his uh, PlayStation 2, which I'm very he excited will. about. Same. And yeah. uh, we're going to get some other cool stuff. But yeah, that's that's it for this minute. If you want to check out the, the notes, too fast too forever.com, patreon.com slash too fast too forever, and check out the, uh, the entire document with way too much detail about stuff that you probably uh, might not care about. But it's all here if you want it. Too fast too forever.com. Uh, Joe, let's take a quick break. Let us come back and talk about the Brian O'Connor Wikia on fastandfurious.fandom.com. Forever, 
episode number 52, Brian O'Connor Lab Diagnostics. This episode is brought to you by theacademy.ca.gov. The basic police academy courses include fundamental principles, procedures, and techniques of law enforcement, including criminal law, patrol procedures, cultural diversity, investigative procedures, report writing, defense tactics, firearms, leadership, ethics, community policing, police vehicle operations, and much more that I'm going to stop reading. Cool. Well, Joe, let us dive headfirst into the Brian O'Connor wiki. Uh, we're going to tr- we're gonna try this. I'm going to... Um... I got it up, too. Should I keep it up? Should I read along with you or no? No, I think... Let me... I... Well, I guess... I guess we should maybe treat this like emails. Like, I'll just read it, and you can add your flavor text, and we'll just sort of see how that goes. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's try it. I used to say I lived my life a quarter mile at a time, and I think that's why we were brothers, because you did too. No matter where you are, whether it's a quarter mile away or halfway across the world, you'll always be with me, and you'll always mm. be my brother. Dominic Toretto. It's a powerful quote, obviously, to kick, off, to kick this off, but uh, I think it's weird that on the Brian lap, it's a quote from Dom? Well, I mean, it's, it's the most Brian directed quote but yeah it's weird that it's they chose a quote quote from dom not from brian yes i agree this is not a universal studios wiki this is just a bunch of fans like this is just a wiki for fans of the series so it's all fan sourced things may be wrong yeah, it's like, like us the, you know wes has yeah. written in like things have been wrong but we're gonna see so brian o'connor is a former officer a former bad officer in the los <laughs> angeles police department a former agent in the fbi a protagonist In the Fast and Furious franchise, Brian transitions from an officer sworn to uphold the law to a wanted criminal. He makes a full transition to the criminal life when he abandons the FBI to help Dominic Toretto, a street racer, avenge the death of his wife, Letty Ortiz, and allows him to escape the law again, this time accompanying him. He falls in love with Dominic's sister, Mia Toretto, and the two have a child named Jack. With another child on the way, Brian agrees to do, quote, one last job when Toretto's crew decide to avenge Han Solo, who was killed by Deckard Shaw. Yes. Again, like, that's a good summary, but it's also, like, a lot of that isn't really his story. It's just, like, it's the franchise story, kind of, what he's involved in. You know what I mean? Everybody's kind of writing this from Dom's perspective. I think that the movies and the franchise are kind of from Brian's perspective, right? Haven't we talked about that? That this is, like... Yes. Like, it's... That was, I think... It uh, starts like this. I think that was a Kate Hudson idea, right? That they were... that Because we always sort of saw this as Dom's franchise, but I think she was saying, no, like, this is... This is Brian. He's, he's the shoes we're in. He is, because we see him in the first and the second. You know, like, neither of them... Dom kind of comes in in the third, but the, we're seeing this from Brian's perspective until you know, seven or something, yes. right? Mm-hmm. And I think that we're still, and I think, you know, that was kind of Kate's idea too, is that like the fact that we're no longer seeing it from his perspective is kind of why these later movies feel different. Like not only is he just missing, like his presence is missing, but it's also a new perspective. And it's just like, it's not the same way that we've been looking at these movies as we have been for six of the first seven. They should have done something like Hardcore Henry and just made us <laughs> Brian. <laughs> and it could have just been like a first person Brian movie. I can't believe that's not like a YouTube thing already. You know what I mean? Like, gotta be. All right. What if we what if we played a video game where you're you are just Brian? Like not like a Fast and the Furious game, but like you are Brian, and it's just like through your eyes, and you're like, hey, Dom, here's a wrench. Like a VR game? Yeah, exactly. That works. That works. Brian was born on. Do you want to guess his birthday? Oh, I feel like we. I've seen it. We saw. We talked about it on his on his. Driver's license, is that where they're getting it from? I, I don't know. I'm I, guessing. I don't know where they get anything from. Was it September? Nope. Oh, February? Nope. I don't know. July? Pick a number. Fourth of July. Nope. Fourth of July. Nope. Damn, 21st. July 14th. Okay. What year? Think about 2000. So if you think about the first movie canonically takes place maybe in 2003 ish, how old do you think he is in the first movie and then sort of bring it back? I think it was like. 82? 78. He's a little bit older. A little bit older. Okay. I'm adding right now to my calendar, uh, Brian O'Connor's birthday um, (laughs) repeats every year. Raised by his mother in Barstow, California. He remembers little about his father. How do do we know that he was raised only by his mother? I don't know. Does he say that? Mm. Or he was like, I didn't have a dad at some point? I don't remember that. We might, we're going to have to pay special attention to the Too Fast, Too Furious, where he talks about growing up with with Roman. Uh, There is going to be a little bit of things, something later that I saw... There's a little bit of discrepancy okay. there, so I don't know. Maybe, like, is there stuff, like, in canon? Like, are there, like... Like, you know how, like, on Mike's podcast on Third Time's a Charm, he was doing Third Time's a Book, he was doing the book club? Like, I wonder if there's books or if there's more content. Hmm. Well, maybe this is, like, the, the the director's commentary that we haven't watched yet or something. So they're referencing... Let's see here. The references at the bottom. Fast Five, the original movie, Too Fast, Too Furious. There is... 
an article about his brothers jumping into help finished Fast and Furious, Fast and Furious Six, Furious Seven, how an extreme make- movie makeover saved Fast and Furious, The Fast and the Furious, Seven Things You Probably Didn't Know About It, Entertainment, blah blah blah, and then trivia. No, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. We'll have to pay attention in the movies. When we get to you know in seventeen years when we get to the minute in five, maybe we'll figure it out. Yeah. And there's a trivia section, too, so maybe we'll get to that in a little bit. Okay, cool. He remembers little about his father and has no memories of what he sounded or looked like. And that is apparently from the uh, from Fast Five. He, he said that in Fast Five. Maybe when they're talking about, you know, being a father. Oh, yes, you know what? He's like, yeah, I don't even remember my dad's voice. During his childhood, he befriended another Barstow local, Roman Pierce. The two often True. caused trouble together, among other ill-advised activities. Hey, let's uh, let's cut the the slanted writing here. Let's, let's just report the facts, man. Um, ill-advised yeah. activities and played sports such as football. He did, according to Too Fast, Too Furious. Okay, God, we need to pay more attention yeah. to like the really nuanced dialogue in these. Because it, there's a Fast and Furious trivia night. It's like, well, what sport did Brian play? Baseball, football, lacrosse. Like, I think he seems like a lacrosse bro. You know what I mean? Like, if if that was an option. No, no, because he's too poor. I would have guessed like basketball or something. Mm, okay. You know what I mean? Because he was poor in Barstow with Roman, and he was like, you know boys with Roman, it would make more sense that they would have, like, one basketball, and lacrosse is expensive, so... But so like, is football, though, too. You were at the point, even then, that you had, like, the University of Miami was such a big football school that there was, like, a football region there, that's how we get, you know, Antonio Brown and, like, all these guys out of the Florida region, the state of Florida, because, like, they have the Pee Wee League set up already. Mm, so that's okay. what I'm saying. The infrastructure. They're, like, yeah, they have the infrastructure for, like, the, the sponsored junior leagues that, you know, are for, like, more unfortunate kids to try to fix them, you know, this kind of thing. So football makes sense. Roman and Brian attended high school together and often dated the same girls. Roman dating the girls <laughs> Brian was no longer romantically involved with. That's referenced in Too Fast, Too Furious. Quote, Roman, you, you feel this girl way too much. She just like that crazy-ass trailer wrath from back in the day, Tanya. Brian says, Tanya, man, you went out with her after I did. Roman says, I mean... Couldn't let her go to waste. <laughs> when Roman and Brian attended prom, Roman presumably had sex with a, quote, easygoing woman named No Knees Denise. <laughs> Brian, no, only thing I've ever seen to take down was No Knees Denise. Remember at prom, Roman says, really, Brian, you can do that right here? As referenced in Furious 7. That one I was very familiar with. We've definitely caught that nuance now. We are familiar with that sure. one. At some point in time, Brian earned his driver's permit. Driving with his mother on the 40 freeway, the brakes of his car in what? front of them locked up and another car hit them from behind, causing a five-car pileup. In a deleted what? scene, Brian says, first time I drove, it was my learner's permit. We were on the 40 freeway, my mother and I, car right in front of me, locks up its brakes, boom! Someone blew into me from behind. Five-car pileup, first time I drove. What Deleted scene from what? I don't know. Too Fast, Too Furious? Maybe the first one? I don't know. I don't know, man. We'll find out. Okay. At some point, we'll watch that scene. Yeah, we'll find it. That's why, we're, we'll that's like why we're going deep on fandom. I like it. No, this is cool. I really do like it. Brian was later sent to juvenile detention for two years in Tucson for committing grand theft auto. But that's a lie. What about those two years in juvie for boosting cars? Tucson, that's, right? This, I had just read a profile <sighs> on your Brian Earl Spilner. But this, but this is a lie. It is this a lie. is a made up. This is a made up thing that they gave him a fake background yep. to throw Dom off when he was undercover. A couple of overnighters, nothing serious. Exactly, yeah. This So, hmm, I call bullshit. As an adult, Brian joined the LAPD, which cost him his friendship with Roman, who did not trust the police. Two months into his earliest tenure on the force, Roman Pierce was arrested for housing stolen cars in a garage. While Brian was not involved in the Roman's arrest, Roman assumed he could have done something for him and later resented his childhood friend and his association with law enforcement from Too Fast, Too Furious. Brian saying, no, I didn't even know what really was going down, but it doesn't really matter to him because once I became a cop, Roman started seeing me as a friend that became the enemy. That's kind of uncalled for. You know what I mean? Like, I don't expect... Like, just because you have a friend that does something doesn't mean he has full authority to do everything. His friend was probably a young cop. Like, he just got on the force. So, it's like, he's going to get him out. He's not, like, the governor. You know what I mean? Like, so how do you... What... Yeah, also, like, you know, just because you're a cop doesn't mean, like, every friend of yours, like, you can just let out of prison, like... Yeah, exactly, there's, like... St- oh, yeah, I went mean, to grade school with that drug dealer, like, uh, you know, let him out, he was a good guy back then, you know, I just, it's, yeah, I don't know. Exactly, that, yeah, that's my point, it, like, it, well, you shouldn't expect that, you could be mad at him for being a cop, but you can't be like, I'm mad at you because you didn't get me out of jail, like, what? I'm now scrolling through the, uh, Fast, the original, the Fast and Furious write up and one thing that I learned is that Tanner's subordinate, the other guy who arrests him, is named Muse, M U S E. 
Like the band. I guess so. We'll get to that when we get to the minute for sure. Okay. Um, there's a bunch of things here. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. There's there's like hundreds of words about the turbocharged prelude. I can't believe that there's so much of this. <laughs> okay. There's a wiki article about the girl as played by Minka Kelly. Wow. All right. That's how like in-depth yeah. this can be at some point. Bullet. During his time in Miami, Brian befriends a former street racer named Tej Parker and begins to work at his garage. He also becomes friends with Tej's associates, Suki and Jimmy. Brian True. gradually builds his reputation as a street racer and earns the nickname Bullet after the Steve McQueen character. Yes, exactly. We need this one. Then Too Fast, Too Furious. There's a bunch of stuff here. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Fast and Furious. Brian's superior is named Penning. P-E-N-N-I-N-G. Interesting. Penning. Yeah. Is that the guy that he punches? No, that's... I don't think that... That's somebody that's else. I think that's the guy who like, his... basically tells the guy he punches to like nut up. You know what I mean? He's just like, yeah. stop bleeding on my floor. Yeah, exactly. Fast Five, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Fast and Furious Six, Furious Seven. All right, and the Fate of the Furious. So here's the Fate of the Furious. Brian is mentioned by Roman and Letty as when Dominic betrays the team due to the influence of Cypher. Roman suggests Brian should be brought in to help them figure out why Dominic betrayed them, but Letty refuses, so that they cannot bring in Brian and Mia back into the conflict and reminding him that they agreed to keep Brian and Mia retired from the team, presumably due to Brian and Mia wanting a normal life for the safety of their children. Brian is also seen in a photo in Dominic's car. Dominic later names his son after Brian. Which we talked about is weird that, like, Brian's not at the table at the end, right? I get that th- that for us, it would be weird if he was. Yes. But story-wise, it's weird that he's not there. Because it's like, you know, Dom just found a new child. Like, you wouldn't have called him and been like, bro, you gotta come eat dinner with us and, like, meet your nephew. Right, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. The way that I can sort of kind of write that off is that like if you don't want to call them back in for the job i understand that but it's also like do you want to just call them in from like because they're probably overseeing some overseas somewhere like and just the logistics of having to fly in with two young kids and everything it's just you know fair you can't That's just be for every point. every barbecue right but uh who knows yeah but i mean it was like we just brought my son home like this is like it's like a christening right like you would be there for that. I can see that. Like, if they have, like, if, if Nine starts with a christening or something, I can see them sort of doing, ah. like, a double, you know what I mean? Like, or just, like, sort of, like, a shadowy blonde hair, maybe formerly blonde hair, brown hair, former cop, former FBI agent, whatever. I can sort of see that happen. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Brian, so this is under the category, or the, the section, personality. Brian's a man driven largely by his emotions. That is... That's basically, that's Brian in a sentence, right? Like, that is... That's one sentence of Brian, yep. The repercussions of his actions are often the last thing he thinks about before jumping headfirst into a situation. As a young man raised by his mother, a single parent, on account of the absence of his father, Brian experienced little to no sense of a family unit. The strongest relationships he had with other men were Roman Pierce and Sergeant Tanner, his commanding officer within the LAPD. Roman sustained his wilder inhibitions as a young man, theft and unflinching loyalty, but in the LAPD, his ambitions locked him into a unit where he was counted on and respected by Tanner. However, his allegiance to the police temporarily lost due to his friendship with Roman, who never trusted the police. Yes. I like that idea that because he raised, he was raised in a broken home, this sense of family, something he never really had before that he'd always been seeking, and that's maybe why, aside from just falling in love with Dom, why he chose a family unit as opposed to like he's in love with a woman he's in love with a guy but it's also this sense of home and family that he never had before yeah and it plays well into the rest of the character development why he and roman are such boys right because he didn't have any you know family and like male figures in his life like you just said with dom even him joining the police force it's they often call it a brotherhood right yeah, the, like the fraternal mm-hmm, order of mm-hmm, police. Mm-hmm. It, it would make sense that he's seeking family, and with family running through so deep through the films, we didn't know that he didn't have this dad thing. And this actually is really great character writing, yeah. if it's true. Tanner believed Brian was the right man for the undercover assignment that would ultimately lead him to a detective status in the force. Brian believed in upholding the law and was willing to do anything to make a noted career as a police officer. However, I call bullshit on that. <laughs> <laughs> However, in the company of Dominic Toretto, his mark and primary suspect. His loyalties to the LAPD were tested. Brian experienced a family unit in the company of Dominic's found family. The consequences that led Dominic to attack Kenny Linder and apparent guilt led Brian to question the decision to arrest Dom and whether or not he was responsible for the thefts. 
However, he maintained his position as a lawman until he was willing to let Dom go in the face of four major thefts he was responsible for. Yeah. On the run from the police, Brian adapts to the life of criminal activity, excelling as a street racer. Mm, debatable. He did, yeah, d- yeah d- definitely debatable. I don't think he was very ex- excellent as a street racer. However, he maintains enough of what he learned in the academy to remain off the radar long enough before he's apprehended by U.S. Customs and FBI. Absolutely not. Vince, or, oh no, that's right, because we have that scene where he gets like fake arrested right customs arrest him because they're like figuring yes. it out wow. i think they're saying that yeah. he's able to drive cross country without getting arrested okay. maybe i don't know he uses his knowledge that his participation with both government and en- with both government entities will grant him freedom from the law as a wanted man during an undercover stint with roman the two are able to repair their friendship his relationship with roman suggests a strong bond of trust fostered in their youth Brian revealed that the reasons that led him to let Dom go in Los Angeles were connected to the guilt of not being able to help him. Okay. I do like that this is essentially adding, like, the why. Like, the movies essentially say, they show, like, why he's doing the things he's doing. They don't explain it. Like, this is like, well, here, he's doing this because of this. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Some of it's not true, but, you know, some of it is. Yeah, it's your own perception of it. That's fine. The additional guilt of breaking up the Toretto friend haunts... Oh, this is a terribly written sentence. Uh, The Toretto friend haunts Brian when he joins the FBI and places Letty Ortiz undercover in exchange for a pardon for Dom. Mia believes him to be a manipulative and untrustworthy man who she regrettably still loves despite what he did to hers and Dominic's family and friends. When reunited with Dominic... Brian makes efforts to do right by the Toretto, by the Toretto's by helping Dom avenge Letty, who was presumed killed by a member of Arturo Braga's cartel. Brian's able to reconcile with Mia, with whom he reinitiates a relationship once more, settles things with Dominic. I don't know that this is all person. Like I don't know why this is all under personality. Like this doesn't feel like personality. No, it's more story. It's just story driven. Yeah, I don't know. The denial of Dom's clemency allows Brian to abandon the FBI and choose Mia and Dom as permanent family unit, quote unquote family unit, officially yeah. assimilating into the life of a criminal. Brian's fears of parental inadequacy rear when Mia announces her pregnancy during the run from the law. While Dominic is assured that Brian will be a decent father to Mia's son, Brian remains uncertain. However, following their escape to the Canary Islands, Brian is ready to leave their life as criminals behind and dedicate his life to his new family. A father to his year-old son, Jack, Brian is able to reconcile his guilt for involving Letty in the investigation with Braga after learning she's alive. So he's like, oh, she's not dead. I didn't completely ruin everything. I no longer feel guilty about killing her because she's not dead. Exactly. I mean, that's... Obvious and dumb, but, you know, whatever. All right. It works. Though he continued to blame himself, Brian is free of the responsibility of guilt when Letty reminds him that the decision to uncover, to go undercover, was her own. It was, yeah. Well, she says that, I don't know, man. If it's, like, get Dom back and be a police officer, like, it's not really, like, her decision, right? Like, she's kind of strong-armed into it. But okay, yeah. we'll get to Letty eventually. Brian, at his heart, is a thrill seeker, taking risks that are often unnecessary or place himself and others at risk on the chance of a major payoff. His chosen professions within the LAPD and FBI place him in a type of danger that's only met or offset by his life of crime. When pardoned of his crimes and allowed to return to Los Angeles with the others, Brian experienced a type of withdrawal from the sense of constant danger as he tried to become adjusted to civilian life. This is when he's driving the van. Yes. When he appreciated his life with Mia and Jack no less, Mia feared that he had grown despondent with his life with them. Dominic maintained that the best thing Brian did for his family was remaining a good man to his sister and his nephew. That the thrill of their, quote, old lives wasn't sustainable. After promising Mia that avenging Han would be the, quote, last job, Brian returns to Mia and Jack to make good of the promise of being a father to his growing family, quote, parting ways with Dom and his old life. Why does Dom get to be a cool dad and Brian doesn't? Because I think Brian's always kind of a little bit of a nerd, right? Like, he's always kind of an outsider. He's a dork. Yeah. As Kara said, what kind of fucking narc eats tuna on white, no crust? No crust. Yeah, exactly. There's an ability section. Let's see here. He was trained. We're, we're, we're nearing the end because there's going to be a guessing game for you and there's going to be some trivia. Okay. Brian was okay. a trained officer in the LAPD and a field agent of the FBI, adept in handling various weapons, such as firearms and melee weapons. Brian has sharp sense, instincts yeah. that aid him in weapons and hand-to-hand combat. Brian was a formidable opponent, able to hold his own against Vince, overpower Braga, and several of his henchmen, and defeat Kiet, a, mar- a skilled martial artist, which I think is in seven, six or seven? Yeah, that's true, actually, mm-hmm. yeah. 
fair. Again, these are all good a little points. bit of automancer there, but uh, you know, there's maybe a reason for it. Well, he did train with the FBI, right? True. Like, so if he made it to the FBI, he trained with the FBI, so he, he probably knows all of these things. I guess yeah, it's, it's less believable that suddenly Tej is like a martial artist, right? Because he's just like a exactly. street level and it's hacker less that, mechanic. <laughs> that Tej is like a now you know super hacker yes. too. Brian at least was a cop, so he did some kind of fight training. Mm-hmm. He did struggle against Dom, though, being easily tossed onto a car in their first encounter and then pinned and heavily beaten during their second fight. Well, of course. I mean, like, Dom is, like, the big bad guy, right? Like, you can't... Not the bad guy, but, like... You can't beat Dom. Like, Dom can't be Dick Measure Be-y. Contest, yeah. right? So Exactly. Brian often responded to firearms only when needed and can easily switch to fighting. As a police officer and FBI agent, Brian used manipulative interrogation tactics that fooled suspects into doing what he wanted, as seen like in what? Fast and Furious 6. What does he do? Do you remember? Um, Is that a reference hmm. to? In 6, what does he do to fool people? I don't know. Does he... Is We'll have to keep an eye out for it. Yeah, I guess... I guess. When there was no evidence to use against suspects, he often planted evidence to incriminate them, as in Fast and Furious. We know that. Remember the uh, yes. Joe Dirt? Brian's yes. ambition to make detective often forced him to excel as an undercover agent from the first movie. Bullshit. Never really excelled at anything here. No. Never was good at being a police. A, a police. A police. Mr. Police. You had all the clues. He would resort to brute force when provoked, but was resourceful, often using his environment to his advantage. Yeah, because he could do parkour, too. Yeah, parkour. Brian was a skilled tracker, able to easily find one of Braga's men by using his name and cross-checking it with records of street racing. It's not a skill tracker. That should be able to use computers. And also his assistant <laughs> yeah. does that. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's give the woman credit for her job in this movie. Well, not even his assistant. That's demeaning. But like, yeah, the, the female officer there, the female agent is just like, oh, yeah, here's David Park. It's like his, his tracker like, is just like, the that's the car I would drive. Like, that's, yeah, of course. Yeah. But I've, I've, made, the, I've, I've made the point there before. It's like shitty car, shitty car, minivan, fully souped up tuner car. It's like, yeah, of course. <laughs> exactly. He's able to locate Letty in London by using a bullet used when she shot Dom by tracking the bullet and the gun to a local pawn shop. Again, computers. And in, like, the forensics department yep. of your police force? Like, not... <laughs> I don't think Brian was doing the analysis on the gun tr- on the gun shells, the, the bullet shells. It's like, can you believe that Brian is not only Bruce Wayne, but also Alfred, and also uh, <laughs> yes, whatever exactly. whatever character or more... I don't remember. Oh, Lucius Fox? He's, uh... He's all three of them in one. He's so good. Yeah. He managed to infiltrate Braga's crew and exposed him by using the glasses he and fake Braga drank from in a club to ascertain Braga's fingerprints. It's not fake Braga. It's actual Braga <laughs> pretending to not be Braga, right? True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do like that they that I do like that they called him fake Braga, so hopefully somebody's fake Ronda Rousey. Hopefully Gina Carano's <laughs> fake Ronda Rousey. If we if we already initiated it, it should work. If you're out there listening and you make edits on fandom, fix this up for us. <laughs> no, no, nobody nobody will. Brian we should fix it. We could. I'm not going to. We could. Yeah, that's what I I meant we should do it. Oh yeah, we're going yes, to do we it. We should. I agree. We should do it. We will <laughs> yeah. not be doing it. No, that's that's what I was trying to say. Sorry. This is also written on a level between actual Wikipedia and You Are My Life Spam. Like, it's in between somewhere. <laughs> it is. It's, that's a perfect description of it. Because, like, sometimes they write, like, they're a lawyer, and it's, like, a like the court document. And then sometimes it's like, well, because. And it's like, because Brian has a wild eye yep. and likes travel. Yeah. And you're like, okay. <laughs> Brian was skilled with computers, programming the electronic parts in his skyline. He also managed to hack into the FBI databases in order to gain access to Luke Hobbs' file. While he was hiding with Mia at Armando's mansion in the Dominican Republic, he set up surveillance equipment at his garage. Okay. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I don't think he set up the skyline either. No, probably not. That was definitely a no. team effort. Yeah. Brian's skills as a street racer were dismal during his time undercover in 2004. He was much less skilled, firing Nas too early in the quarter-mile race and losing control of his car. In company of Dom Toretto, his skills gradually improved. So maybe he's not an automancer, maybe he's a Domamancer. That sounded like a weird genre of porn. I'm sure it is. Watch. Just uh, Dom- dudes who look like Vin Diesel. <laughs> that definitely exists. Rule 34 on that. Mm-hmm. There's definitely Vin Diesel, either deep fake or Vin Diesel lookalike porn. No, we have sure. not looked up yet, which we should. Your One of your original ideas for Pit Stops was porn parodies. We need to see. Is, there's got to be a Fast and Furious porn parody, right? Oh, I hope there's so. got to be. I know that there's that. There's like a satire. There's like a yeah, you know, but like remember? I'm less interested in that. I want to see the actors that they cast. I want to see the story that they write. Again, I'm not interested in the actual sex. I'm interested to see what story they tell in this universe. It's got to be out there. It's got to be out there. Um, I just searched. This ain't Fast and Furious XXX. This is a porn parody movie. 
It kind of looks like it. Is that Kimmy Granger? Yeah, it is. Okay. Oh, who's is she Mia? Do you know who Kimmy Granger Kimmy is? Kimmy Granger's like one of like the ten most famous porn stars in the world, I think. That's what I figured. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I just said the name, but I just like recognize her face. I get. I don't know. This is such a weird. Here, let me send this to you. Check it out, cause like the the cover is like half a porno cover. Oh, it won't let me send it, cause it's at sexofilm.com. Just search Fast and Furious parody, and it's like the second link. Fast and Furious. We, parody. we might have to buy and watch this. There's just like fucking on a car, is what it seems. It's it seems like that. The fuck and the furious on Pornhub.com. Oh. This ain't Fast and Furious XXX by ParodyXXX.net. Yes. Scene one: the meat. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. Scene two. My crew has my back. You can imagine what that Wait, one is. Wait, no, I think like. this is a different one because Kimmy Granger's not in this one. This is just featuring like Cassandra on the cover. Cruz, Courtney Shea, Misha yeah. Brooks, Ryan Ryan, Sasha Hart, Amy Black. Yeah, but look at the cover of it. It looked like Kimmy Granger on the top. Oh. The girl on the far right, doesn't it? That's something that I don't like. I can I, I can reckon I can put the name to the face, but I, I, I can't do it the other way around. Okay. All star cast anal fast cars. <laughs> oh, Hustler made this. Okay. Yeah, it's like a real thing. Oh, scene five, a Sunday drive. So the reaction on this site, 31% said happy, 14% said glad, 15% said LOL, 14% said rage, 11 said what, 8 said met, and 8 said sad. So it seems overall like a pretty good... I think we're going to have to take one for the team and watch this. If you're a fan of supercars and high-speed chases, you're surely a fan of the Fast and Furious series, but what I'm going to present now is not actually a Fast and Furious. However... The action is just as intense as in the original movie. This ain't Fast and Furious Triple X is the porn parody of Fast and Furious, so now you will be able to satisfy that kinky fantasy which was always crossing your mind when Letty, played by Michelle Rodriguez, showed up in the scene wearing a tight and greased tank top through which you could see her nips. All right, that's I, I understand that this is a uh, porn parody description, but like, let's class it up a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Come on. In this parody, Letty is played by the kinky Latina porn star Cassandra Cruz, and she's obviously banging Dom, the big bald street racer, interpreted <laughs> by Will Powers. This is just one scene of the parody. Every other character of the original movie gets played by a former famous porn star, such as Misha Brooks, Amy Black, Carla Carrera, Carlo Carrera, or Ryan Ryans. I don't think I know any of those names. Yeah, I don't know any of those names either. Priority Triple X gave it a 7.5 out of 10 for actors, 7.1 for screenplay, 7.9 for costumes. Overall, 7.5. So, you know, a passable, I guess. We gotta watch this and just talk about the storyline. Yeah. Like, you could just, like, skip the, like, other parts, but we gotta watch it yeah. and talk about the storyline. Sorry we took this weird tangent, if you're listening, but... Brian Skills hopefully. is a street racer. We'll just get right back into it. Brian Skills is a street racer with Dismal, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. He became proficient at drifting and cornering, often driving imports and tuners. His skills continue to improve during his time in Miami. Brian's a skilled mechanic, mm, modifying a Skyline GTR to participate in a race for a membership in Braga's crew. Mm. Prior to that, with Tej Parker's help, he modified his own Skyline, during his time in Miami. As a fugitive running with Dom Toretto, Brian used all the skills he had learned as a young man, a car thief, and a government official to assist in earning major scores or catch other thieves. Yeah, that makes sense. They have a lot of the weapons that he used. Okay, so here. Known inconsistencies, all right? Too Fast, Too Furious establishes that Roman and Brian grew up together in Barstow. In Fast Five, however... Brian tells Dom and the others that he met Roman in juvenile detention. Well, that could be juvenile detention in Barstow. Sure could be. So. At the end of Too Fast, Too Furious, Brian and Roman intended on starting a garage together. In Fast and Furious, however, Brian's become an FBI agent. Brian and Roman's plans are never mentioned or referenced in the series after Too Fast. While likely a continuity error, Fast and Furious is considered a soft reboot of the first one, the franchise by Universal. But you could, you know, like, if you and I hit the lottery, we could be like, yeah, we're going to start a garage. It doesn't mean we have to do yep. it. You know what I mean? So, like, I, I get it, but I also don't, so. Oh, so here we go. So here, this is what you were saying before. You were right. Birth date in the Fast and Furious. His driver's license shows his birthday is July 4th, 1977. That's what I thought. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. However. wrong with the year? The date on his license was likely one given to Brian or Earl Spillner, his undercover identity. In mm -hmm. Too Fast, his birthday is shown as August 29th, 1973 even older. However, once more, it's the birthday given to his undercover identity. It's unknown as to why his undercover's identity birthday changed from 77 to 73. Incidentally, Paul Walker, who plays Brian O'Connor, was born in 73. Mm. In Fast okay. 5, when Luke Hobbs is pulling up Brian's file, his birthday is listed as July 14th, 1978. So that's where we get that from. Yeah, and that should be the right yes. birthday. Considering that the other two birth dates shown in the series are for Brian Earl Spillner, this is likely to be Brian O'Connor's actual date of birth. Also, the DSS file shows Dom's birthday is August 29th, 
the same date given to Brian in Too Fast, Too Furious. Ooh! I wonder, that probably means that whoever, like, wrote these, or, like, a producer, their birthday, or, like, their wife's birthday was, like, August 29th. You know what I mean? It's just, like... Exactly, yeah. Putting it, putting it in there. Uh, trivia. Brian's service number, when he was a member of the LAPD, was 34762. Okay. That's certainly trivia. We'll get there. Yeah, I'm sure we'll get there in a minute. Brian's surname, O'Connor, suggests Irish ancestry. True. The power slide performed... That's it? That was the, that was the, that was the whole yep. trivia? Mm-hmm. Okay. Top tier trivia. I'm telling you. Yeah. You get what you pay for, and we paid zero dollars for this. And listeners Amen. pretty much paid. I mean, aside from the the six of you whom we love, you all paid zero dollars for this. So, like, what do you want? Exactly. Yeah. So, post the Patreon. We'll do some better. We're not going to do better content, but we might. <laughs> the power slide performed at the end of the opening sequence of Too Fast was performed by Paul Walker, who was a licensed professional driver. The stunt wherein Brian drives his car in reverse was also performed by Paul Walker. All right. Oh, cool. Nice tidbit. That's nice trivia. I like that. Following the death of Paul Walker on November 30th, 2013, Universal chose to retire the character instead of killing him off. Not really trivia, just sort of thing people know. Yeah. Paul Walker's brothers, Caleb and Cody Walker, were among the doubles chosen to complete uh, the scenes Paul Walker was unable to following his death. Weta Digital, W-E-T-A, Weta Digital, Digital, was responsible for the digital recreation of Paul Light- Paul Walker's likeness used in Furious 7. Yeah, which I think there's like a whole background of that, and we need to watch it. This is something I think we knew from one point a long time ago, maybe in the mic lap. Mark Wahlberg, ooh, ooh, Mark Wahlberg, Christian Bale, and Marshall Mathers, a.k.a. Eminem, were all considered for the part of Brian <sighs> O'Connor before Paul Walker was cast. Can you imagine... An Eminem? Well, no, I'm just saying, with Mark Wahlberg, then to have Italian Job be canon? That's what we said, dude. He, we're, so so he's involved with the films, then, if he was considered. Like, he, like, you know, he had to hear this. Italian Job is canon. Yeah. We know that. In September 2016, both Caleb and Cody Walker revealed to Entertainment Tonight that their brother's character may possibly return. Not trivia, just speculation. The white yeah. Toyota Super MK4 using the ending of Furious 7 as Paul Walker's personal car. Yeah, we saw that because, this, you know, as somebody sent to us uh, this week on Facebook, a bunch of Paul Walker's cars are getting auctioned off, and actually a lot of them were used in the films, but a lot of his personal car, car collection was used because, you know, he loved cars and he had a bunch, so. Now, this next part is going to be the guessing game, Joe. So here we have, okay. I need to clean it up a little bit. Give me one second. There is a list of the cars that Brian drives in the movies. Okay. So I want you to guess as many of these cars as you possibly can. I, I can do through, like, a bunch of the early ones. And it's by him driving, right? That's what it yeah, is. Yeah, so I'm going to get rid of these. They're sort of, like, variants, kind of. How many is there total? There are 15. So let's see if you can get half. If you can get eight, I'm going to consider it a win. I think you should be able to get eight. I think. But we'll see. He has definitely a Supra. Uh, can you give me the make and model, please? The MK4. No, just Toyota Supra is fine. Yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah. Toyota Supra. Yes, one. He has a Nissan Skyline. Two. And there's multiple Skylines. Yeah, there's like Are there's like five or six them? of them, but I just count that as one. There's fi- okay. there's 15 uh, unique cars. There's one car that we're going to get to that has like three variations that are like, there's like, it just says like Nissan Skyline, like okay. five movies, right? But like there's one that's like three different variations, but I'm just sort of counting the main one. Yeah, count it as one. Yeah. Okay. In six, he dri- he's driving a Mustang, right? No. What is he driving in six? It's an old Challenger. No, but you're close-ish. Old Charger? Dodge Charger. And there's, th- there's actually three different kinds. There's one that's the cop car he drives as a Charger. There's a new Charger yeah. and some other okay. kind of car. So there's three. Does he drive a tank? No, but he kind of drives the tank of cars. The tank of cars? I um, mean, he has, oh, he has a, a Subaru Impreza. Yep. When four. he jumps out of the plane. Yep. He, a, a tank of cars, like a Hummer? Hummer F1, five. Okay, let me see. Is he ever driving a, like a tractor trailer? Does he drive the like the bus that Ramsey is on? No, I don't think he drives it. He's just like fighting in the in the driver's seat. He has a Mitsubishi Lancer in two. No, not a Lancer. An Evo. It's a Lancer Evolution. Oh yeah, Evo. Yep. Mm-hmm. Six. Exactly. Oh, and then he has what is the other guy's car? The blue car. Is it a Challenger and a Charger? No, there's no. Is there's another Dodge, the... but there's not a. It's not a Challenger. A Dodge Dart. Nope. So that's through two. Uh, the Mitsubishi Eclipse Spider in two. Uh, no, yep, he takes the Evo. One. He also drives an. He also drives an Eclipse in the first one. So in the first movie, okay. he drives an Eclipse. He drives a Super. He drives one other car that you've not guessed yet. And I think, oh, oh, the truck. Yeah. What kind of? What kind Harry's of, what, truck. What kind of truck is it? Ford. Yep. Uh, F one fifty. Yep. There we go. So there's eight. Um, in okay. the turbocharged Prelude, he drives a Skyline. He also drives one other car. Yes, I remember. Ooh, it's the other Dodge. Uh, it's a... Uh, what else does he drive in the Prelude? Uh, so it's a Dodge... 
not Challenger, not Charger. Correct. Yeah, it's it was also the the model is a movie, a bad movie starring Jessica Biel. Gili. No. Dodge. Mm. We'll come back to that one. We'll come back to that one. In Too Fast, he drives the Skyline, he drives the Evo, and he drives another car, a, a, ma- a make that I've never heard of before. What is that one? Tell me. The Yanko Camaro SYC. Oh, no. Yanko is just like the, the souping guys. They're like Oh, the, so it's like a souped up Chevy. Okay. The modified Camaros. Yeah. I, I was trying to figure out what the other old muscle car was in two. So it was a Camaro. Then in okay. four, he drives the Skyline. He drives the Impreza, which you guessed. He drives... Yeah. Another car that you've not guessed, he drives the F1, uh, the Hummer F1, and then the Dodge Charger. There's another Nissan that he drives that you've not guessed yet. An RX-7? Nope. An RX-8? Nope. Um, what is it? GTR. Which is a Skyline. Oh, well, they have it separated here. Yeah, it's it's an American Skyline. Gotcha, okay. Remember, okay. you know dude was my car. I know okay. nothing about this. It's That's that's what we're walking through it, man. In no five, worries. five, he drives Nissan Skyline, two, two different ones, two different Chargers, and the Nissan GTR. In six, he drives two Nissan GTRs. And then he drives three other cars in six that you've not guessed. And then in seven, he drives another car that you've not guessed. Six? I remember the blue car that he's driving when the tank scene is happening, but I don't remember what it is. It should be an older one. Is it like an old Dodge something? Is there an Mm-mm. old Dodge in nope. six? What is it? Like, a, like I was thinking like a Chevy Camaro. I don't know. What is? What are the other ones in six? Oh, okay. So... Here's the cars that you're missing. You're missing the car that he drives on the world's longest runway. You're missing the is car it a Jeep? that... Is he in like a Jeep or something? No. It's an SUV though, yeah? No. Actually, no, it's a sports car. Uh, he, you're missing the car that he drives through London on that early race when there's like the, the flip car. And you're missing the car that was... It's a car that uh, Tej buys, and this is the one that... It's the old blue car. Oh, yeah. That's... I can't think of what the old blue car is. What is it? It's a Ford Escort MK1. Ah, Ford Escort. Okay, okay. Uh, see, I was saying Mustang, so I was, like, yep. in Ford. Okay. So you got one, now, the one on the, the runway, and you got the one at the beginning of the movie. He's driving something red on the runway, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. It's a red car. Mm-hmm. What is it? Give me give me some hints. It's Italian. Oh, it's... Is it an Alpha? Yep. Is it a Giulietta? Yep, nine, 940. Okay. And then the car in the beginning that uh, is used... To drive through London to track down Owen Shaw is a German car. Uh, does he use the Porsche that he wins? No, nope. he does drive a 911 at some point. I don't. Or though it's this is doesn't it have a, this doesn't have a 911 Boxster, listed. Boxster came in. Nope. It's a BMW GT? E60 GT. M5. Oh, that's right. He does have that M5 in the beginning. And then you're missing one car, and what? it is uh, the I think the first car that we see him drive in seven. No, because they're leaving the Porsche out, and he does the Porsche, the drift through the thing when they're doing Italian Job 2 and 5, because they all drift with that Porsche. Oh, it's, this isn't listed Porsche here. The race. It's not listed here. Yeah, but there's okay, one car that so. is listed that you uh, you missed, and it's the car... In 7? And it's kind of it's, oh. it's kind of a goofy inclusion. The end. Nope, nope, in the beginning. In the beginning... It's the van. Yeah, it's the, the Chrysler yeah. Town and Country. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. I did think I think it did pretty good even before the hints. I got I think, to about I think you got, you got like six or seven just with with zero hints, and you got a couple more with like very slight hints, and then you got the rest. So yeah, not bad. No, I don't think I did too bad. That's pretty cool. Damn, I never really thought about it. Like, there's some that I forgot, like him driving the M5 in that like the beginning of seven or six. Yeah. Like that one was like not in my mind, but I had one that they didn't have, so that was good. Yeah, you uh, you beat the wiki. I, I hopefully did. And that is the end of the Wikipedia article. Is there anything? I mean, we we skipped over the sort of the plot summary, like the description of what he does in all the movies. So there might be stuff that we missed, but is there anything that we can think about that should be here but is not here? <sighs> No. When we finish all the minutes, maybe we can trim stuff up or like think about what we would change. Yeah, like it's 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 not all correct, but it's pretty comprehensive. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff there. I liked it. Some of it's lies. Some of it's speculation. But yeah, for the most part, dreams and wishes. Yeah, we learned some stuff about you know his his mother, his father, his the driver's permit, the deleted scene, which was cool. Yeah, very cool. Do you, dear dear listener, like this kind of thing? Because we you know we're, I don't think we're ever gonna do more than one of these per lap. But if you like this sort of deep dive into either you know a movie or a character or a location or whatever, uh, let us know. Family at cageclub.me. Email in. We'll read it next episode or whenever we get it. Next episode is the Too Fast, Too Furious, and then yeah. uh, you know pit stop every other week, but. It's, I think it's just it's, it's a new way to go deeper in the movies without talking about one movie. Yes. Yeah. Eventually, we've talked about how you know maybe next lap, maybe not next lap, whatever. We'll just do like the Fast and the Furious, and so we'll do we'll listen to the director's commentary one week. We'll watch deleted scenes one week. You know, if there's mm-hmm. a wiki article about that, we'll we'll, we'll talk about that. Like. We can go. Exactly. We can go into the specific movie in a deeper way, but uh, you know, there's a lot of characters that we love. I think Brian, like I'm guessing, Brian and Dom, Brian Dom. probably have the, the longest wikis by a mile. But there's yeah, probably the a rock. bunch that we could, you know, yeah. 
There's probably a yep. bunch that we can find out there that are, you know, worth looking into. Solid. Yep, I agree. You were just on another podcast on our network that came out today as we record I this. It was. It was so much fun. I was on Foodie Films with Mr. Kyle Reinfried. Mm-hmm. We were talking about food stuff, uh, mostly just bullshit, but uh, the movie we were talking about was Ch- Chocolat. You guys would know his voice from here because he's been on an episode last lap. He was on the Fast Five with Brian. Yeah, he was on the Fast Five with Brian, and and those guys cracked me up, and um, we were just giggling and talking nonsense over there. I told those guys that I think that Too Fast, Too Forever is pretty much in the same vein. So, again, it was like a crossover type of you got my same bullshit that you get here there. So check it out if you want to hear me talk about how Johnny Depp ruined a movie. Yeah. That should have been for Lifetime. Yep. The episode's a long episode. It's a, 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 presumably about Chocolat, but it's mostly like half an hour about beer stories, half an hour about beer Chocolat, stories. 20 minutes about Armageddon, and then just 20 minutes about nonsense. <laughs> yes, yeah. Which is pretty much how our, our yeah. podcast goes about Fast and the Furious. Yeah. And that's what I was trying to explain there. I was like, yeah, like it's about Fast and the Furious, but really it's just 20 minutes about beer stories and then 20 minutes about Fast and the Furious and like this kind of stuff so yeah for all things too fast too forever you can go to cageclub.me facebook.com slash too fast too forever or at too fast too forever on twitter and instagram email us family at cageclub.me check out our patreon page at too fast too forever.com sign up now to vote to cast your vote on the paul walker Do fans it. choice come back next week for too fast too furious joe should we announce when do you want to announce the next pit stop you want to do that today or you want to do that next week how far in advance Ooh, we want no, to... No, I think ki- I think today. All right. I think today. Well, in yeah. two weeks, this is actually... It's good to have a little bit of extra time. In yeah. two weeks, we're going to be talking about the Charlize Theron Netflix series, Hyperdrive, the yes. American Ninja Warrior with cars. So I've got to watch We've that. We've been promising it for a while, yeah. And and I watched like half of it, but I'm going to rewatch it, and then Joey's going to watch it, and we're going to talk about Hyperdrive. I think it's good to talk about which pit stop we're doing next on the pit stop sure. to yeah. give it like some time. I agree. And we'll cool. remind you next week. But yeah, I think there's like, I think we looked up what they're not, like nine episodes, like 45 ish minutes each. Yeah. Um, so go check yeah. that out on Netflix, Hyperdrive, the American Ninja Warrior for cars. We'll be talking about that in two weeks after we talk to Kara about Too Fast, Too Furious next week. I'm Joey Lewandowski. I'm Joe too. And we'll see you next week right here on Too Fast, Too Forever. Too Fast, Too Forever.